Hello, my name is Lynette and I'm with ERCO. ERCO is the Immigrant and Refugee Community Organization. I'm very excited to read the name jar to you today, written by Yang Suk Chol. As we look at the cover of the book, why do you think the story is called The Name Jar? What do you think the connection is between the girl and the jar? What do you think will happen over the course of the story? And how do you think it will end? Well, let's get started. The Name Jar by Yang Suk Choi. Through the school bus window, Hoon Hae looked out at the strange buildings and houses on the way to her new school. It was her first day and she was both nervous and excited. She fingered the little block of wood in her pocket and remembered leaving her grandmother at the airport in Korea. Her grandmother had wiped away Eun Hae's tears and handed her an ink pad and small red satin pouch. Your name is inside, she had said. My name, Eun Hae had wondered. Again, she took out the red pouch to look at the wooden block with her name carved in it. As she ran her fingers along the grooves and ridges of the Korean characters, she pictured her grandmother's smile. Is that thing for show and tell? A boy asked Unhe, surprising her. Unhe looked up as more kids leaned over. No, it's mine, Unhe answered, quickly putting the pouch back in her pocket. Are you new here? What's your name? A girl asked. Unhe, said Unhe. Uni? The girl asked, scrunching up her face. Ooh, ooh, Uni, some kids chanted. No, no, Unhe corrected. It's spelled U-N-H-E-I. It's pronounced Unhe. Oh, it's Yuhe, the boy said, like Yuhe. What about K-U? Just then, the bus pulled up to the school and the doors opened. Unhe hurried to get off. Yuhe, bye-bye, the kids yelled as she left. Unhe felt herself blush. Unhe stood in the doorway of her new and noisy classroom. She was relieved that the kids on the bus had gone to other rooms, but her face still felt red. Aren't you going in? asked a curly-haired boy with lots of dots on his face. You're the new girl, right? he asked cheerfully. Unhe nodded, and before she could walk away, the boy took her hand and pulled her through the door. Here's the new girl, he announced so loudly that the teacher, Mr. Kokotos, almost dropped his glasses. Mr. Kokotos thanked him and greeted Unhe. Please welcome our newest student, he said to the class. She and her family just arrived from Korea last week. Unhe smiled broadly and tried not to show her nervousness. What's your name? Someone shouted. Unhe pictured the kids on the bus. Um, I haven't picked one yet, she told the class, but I'll let you know by next week. As Mr. Kokotos showed her to her desk, she felt many round, curious eyes on her. Why doesn't she have a name? She heard someone whisper. Maybe she robbed a bank in Korea and needs a new identity, a boy replied. On the bus home, nobody teased her, but Unhe kept thinking about her name. How was school, Unhe? The mother asked when she walked in. Did you understand the teacher? Unhe simply nodded. She unpacked her school bag and set the red pouch by a photograph of her grandma. I'm glad you are learning English well, her mother said. You must study hard, behave nicely, and get good grades to show that you're a good Korean. I will, replied Unhe, but, but I think I would like my own American name, she said quickly. Her mother looked at her with surprise. Why? Unhe is a beautiful name. Your grandma and I went to a name master for it. But it's so hard to pronounce, Unhe murmured. I don't want to be different from all the Americans. You are different, Unhe, her mother said. That's a good thing. Unhe just wrinkled her nose. Later that day, Unhe and her mother went grocery shopping in the new neighborhood. They passed Badil's Falafel, Tony's Pizza, and Dot's Deli. A big graffiti-painted garbage truck roared like a lion and took off down the street. Nothing sounded or looked familiar until they got to Kim's Market. The sign was in both English and Korean. 
Her mother picked up cabbage to make kimchi, Korean-style spicy pickled cabbage, and other vegetables and meat. She also found some seaweed, Unhei's favorite, for soup. It made Unhei smile. Just because we've moved to America, her mother said, doesn't mean we stopped eating Korean food. Have you tried kimchi before? What about seaweed? Do you like it? At the checkout counter, a friendly man smiled at Unhei. Helping your mother with the shopping, he asked. Unhei nodded. I'm Mr. Kim, he said. And what is your name? Unhei, she answered. Ah, oh, what a beautiful name, he said. Doesn't it mean grace? Unhei nodded again. My mother and grandmother went to a name master for it, she told him. A graceful name for a graceful girl, Mr. Kim said as he put their groceries into bags. Welcome to the neighborhood, Unhei. That evening, Unhei stood in front of the bathroom mirror. Hi, my name is Amanda, she said cheerfully. Then she wrinkled her nose. Hi, my name is Laura. Hmm, maybe not. Her smile turned down. Nothing sounded right. Nothing felt right. I don't think American kids will like me, she worried. She began to brush her teeth. Her honor is she said to the mirror, her mouth full of toothpaste. The next morning, when Unhe arrived at school, she found a glass jar on her desk with some pieces of paper in it. Unhe took one out and read it aloud. Daisy, that's my baby sister's nickname, but she said you can use it if you want, said Cindy, who sat next to her. Unhe took out the rest of the paper. Tamil, she read. I got it from a storybook, said Ming. She was smart and brave. Unhei nodded and unfolded another piece. Wednesday? Yeah, you came here on a Wednesday, said Ralph. Thank you for your help. A smile spread over Unhei's face. Ralph quickly said, we'll put more names in. You can pick whatever you like or pick them all, and you'll have the longest name in history. At three o'clock, the bell rang for the end of the school day. Unhei looked out the window and saw it was spring. It's the same rain, she thought, but in a different place. She watched other kids leaving in groups. Hey, a familiar voice called out to her. Unhei turned around to see the curly-haired boy again. I'm Joey, he said. And you? Don't you have any name? Unhei thought for a moment. Well, I can show you, she said, and took out the small red pouch. She pressed the wooden black block on the ink pad and then stamped it on a piece of paper. This is my name stamp, she said. My grandma gave it to me. In Korea, I can use it as a signature when I open a bank account or write a letter. And whenever I miss my grandma, I use it to fill his name. Want to try it? She offered the stamp to Joey, carefully inked the stamp, and pressed it hard on the paper. The red characters gleamed against the whiteness. Wow, that's beautiful, Joey said. Can I keep the paper? Sure, Unhei said, and the two of them shared her umbrella as they walked to the school bus. Every day the jar got fuller with more names, and Unhei read them all. She found a few names she liked. Miranda, Stella, Avery. They sounded interesting. I hope you choose the name I put in, Marco told her at snack time. I've put in three more, said Ralph. Madison, Park, and Lex. They're my favorite street names. Maybe you should close your eyes and draw a name, Rosie suggested. Ralph frowned. That's silly. What if she doesn't like the name she draws? Well, we didn't get to choose our names when we were born, did we? Rosie argued. Everyone thought about this. When Unhe got home from school that day, her little brother ran to give her a letter. It was from her grandma. She opened it quickly. It said, To my Unhe." I hope you are enjoying your new school and new friends. Be sure to help your mother and your little brother. Here the moon is up, but there the sun is up. No matter how far apart we are, and no matter how different America is from Korea, you'll always be my Unhei, your grandma forever. Unhei took out her wooden stamp and filled the paper with it. She thought for a long time in front of the bathroom mirror. 
On Saturday, Boon Hang walked to Mr. Kim's store. Mr. Kim was helping a customer, but he looked up and greeted her. Hi, Eun Hae. Hello, Mr. Kim, Eun Hae replied. She felt as if she were back in her old neighborhood in Korea. Hey, said the customer, turning around. It was Joey. Your name is Eun Hae? He asked her with his eyes open wide. Eun Hae looked quickly at Mr. Kim, then to Joey. She nodded slowly. Yes, it's pronounced Eun Hae, and it means grace. Mr. Kim added. Un hey, Joey said slowly, and this time perfectly. It made Un hey smile. I'll have it ready for you tomorrow, said Mr. Kim to Joey. Thank you, Mr. Kim. See you Monday, Un hey, Joey said to her. He left before she could ask him why he was at the store. On Monday, Un hey came to class early to look at the names one last time, but the jar wasn't on her desk. Instead, there was a single piece of paper, paper with a name on it. Eun Hae slipped it in her pocket. Where's your name jar? Ralph asked as soon as he saw it was gone. I don't know, Eun Hae said. It wasn't on Mr. Kokoto's desk or on any other desk, and it wasn't on the counters or on any of the shelves. As other kids arrived, they helped look. Soon Mr. Kokoto came in and Ralph shouted, The name jar is gone, the jar with all the names in it. Gone? Mr. Kokotos replied. With a look of concern, he asked Unhe, Did you get a chance to read all of the names? Unhe nodded. She took a breath. I'm ready to introduce myself, she said. Unhe wrote her name in both English and Korean on the chalkboard. I like the beautiful names and funny names you thought of for me, she told the class. But I realized that I like my name best, so I chose it again. Korean names mean something. Unhe means grace. Grace, grace, inhe, shouted Ralph. Everyone tried to say it. Unhe, inhe, unhe. Unhe said her name again slowly and clearly. Soon the kids began to say it better, even Mr. Kokotos. They applauded Unhe's choice. I was named after a flower, Rosie whispered to Unhe. Lots of American names have meanings too, Mr. Kokotos reminded everyone. When the class was dismissed, Unhe heard her new friends say goodbye. Bye, Unhe. See you tomorrow. Goodbye, Unhe. Unhe said goodbye and then looked around for Joey, but he was already gone. Unhe, Unhe, come downstairs, Mother called up to Unhe. Your friend is here. Unhe rushed down to see who she met. There stood Joey, and in his arms was the name jar. Where did you find it? asked Unhe breathlessly. Joey looked embarrassed. Um, well, I took it, but only because I wanted you to keep your own name. And you did. He reached out and pulled out the names. Do you want to keep them? He asked. Thank you. I'll keep them as a souvenir, Unhe said happily. Then she pulled out the piece of paper from her pocket. Do you want this back? Joey grinned. You can keep it. I'll return the name jar to the class. Maybe you could put some Korean nicknames in it for us. Names with good meanings. I could do that, agreed Unhe. I've already got a Korean nickname, Joey said. Mr. Kim, help me choose it. Carefully, he pulled a small silver felt pouch from his pocket. Then he took out a dark wooden stamp with beautiful Korean characters sharp, carved sharply into it. He pressed it on the ink pad and then on the piece of paper next to her name. Jin Kyu, read Unhe. That means friend, and Jin Kyu smiled back. The end. How did you like the ending of this story? Was it what you expected? Well, now let's think about our own names. What is your name? Do you know what it means or where it came from? Well, something to think about. Thank you for spending your time with me. And I hope you enjoyed the name jar. Thank you.